The medical doctor whom you produced, or one of them at least, <coughs> has been here in the Human Rights Council and has said that he made statements, the ones that you have shown, under duress and intimidation. Those are the words he used, not me. And in fact, somebody in this room even photographed him when he was about to make these statements. Just last week, Mrs. Tamil Shelburne, who you saw, was here, and she again appeal, appealed to people not to take into account the statements that have been made by her under duress by the government of Sri Lanka a couple of years or more after she'd been released. Okay. Can I just ask you one question, sir? Uh, since I'm meeting with you for the first time, may I know your interest here? What's your interest in this subject? I'm an Africanist. I, I spent 30, more than 30 years with the UN in Africa. A little bit on the front, like the rear animal. Um, I have... Uh, uh, sorry? Yeah. Now, what, what, what's your interest in this particular subject? Yes. My interest is that I was invited to undertake a very special assignment in the office of the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka in 2002. And at the request of the uh, government of Sri Lanka, I entered into a relationship with all communities in Sri Lanka intensively for the period 2002 to 2006. Uh, my last visit was... Uh, the, the I assume Council. it was a paid assignment, right? Am I, am I right? At that time... It can't be a voluntary assignment, am I right? Uh, well, interestingly, uh, maybe you were right about that time. Uh, however, since 2006, I have taken it upon myself to do something rather unusual, which is to be an independent mind. Right, so thank you very much. Because I think the, there's, a, there's a very simple answer to your uh, statement about duress. Many people use this term, duress, when you talk about, talk about somebody and say, no, he, he said this under duress. So it can't be taken as you know, a statement coming from the heart. So there's something very, very similar to that. When somebody talks under the influence of money, it works the same way. So many people who come here to this UN, this Human Rights Commission and talk here are paid. They're working for money. They're not talking because they, they actually feel for it. You may say you're doing this voluntarily now, but even you admitted your first involvement was for a payment. So how do I know for a fact that you're here because you're you are voluntarily doing this, you're actually feeling for it? Probably yes, probably not. So let me finish. Probably yes, probably not. I don't know whether you have the same interest that you have about Sri Lanka, that you have about Libya, that you have about Syria, that you have about Iraq, about the other yeah. countries where you have these problems. Yeah. I don't know whether you have the same problem, or same concern about Yemen, whether you had the same concern about Serbia at that time? I don't know whether if, if, if you're so concerned about the humanity, probably you're not, you should not look at just one country, you should look at all the other countries. Yes. So then you, you mentioned two people, Tamil Chellam's wife and uh, Sarat Fonsek. I think the answer, it was comprehensively answered, but let me also add, add one thing. Mrs. Tamil Chellam, I, I listened to what, he was she, what she was saying here. She was saying very clearly, when she was saved, when she, when she was captured, by the Sri Lankan Armed Force Army. It was repeated, reported immediately by the BBC. That is why she was not killed. That's an absolute lie. It is not, how did, how did BBC know that? BBC got to know that because Sri Lankan media was already there. And it, is, it was Sri Lankan media who gave that information to BBC. Throughout the war, during the latter part of the war, the media was present in the war front. Every little thing that was happening there was reported on the same day. We were Sri Lankans, we were watching TV, we knew exactly what was happening. When Susi's wife was captured in the night, within half an hour, the entire country knew. Why? That was not BBC, that was not Channel 4, that was Sri Lankan media reporting, sir. It was, it, so, when she said that she was saved because of BBC, that's an utter lie. When she was saying sometimes back that she was looked after by, by, by the country, she has no problem traveling about, that was the truth. Now it is no longer duress, now it is money that is talking. It's the same thing about Harat Sarat Fonseca. Sarat Fonseca was the army commander, at that time he never spoke about anything like that. But in 2010, he suddenly decides to contest the presidency. And we find huge amount of money in safes and other things involved. So now today as a politician, when he says these things, sir, we can't accept that. Had he told that at that time, we would have taken it serious, yeah. but not anymore. Now is the under the many other things. Thank you, sir.